Rub up your engines! People love RAV4s. They're good for everyone, including people who have disabilities. Now this gentleman has cerebral palsy. This is his second RAV4 that he's used because he found it's the perfect vehicle and at the perfect price when you get it used. He likes the access and as he says here, you can see he scuffs it here with his legs, but guess what? It doesn't break. You get in other cars, he had a Jeep, it tore it all apart. His previous RAV4, it didn't break anything. He just got this because he wanted a newer one and the advantage of that is to make it work, he just swapped the parts off of his other RAV4. Well, he paid a guy to do it, but nevertheless, the last it saved them an awful lot of money it was totally interchangeable and he added this mobility works because that's the one thing that he's got against this car the fancy electronic steering that's set for various rates of resistance he doesn't like it because he's only using one hand he put the spinner so it's a lot easier to drive around with that's one thing that a lot of people don't think about maybe for a normal person that's oh it's convenient I personally don't like it because I like having the same resistance the whole time so I know exactly how much to pull but maybe Toyota should put something in the software where you can turn that stuff off but he put the spinner on he doesn't have any problems with that he bought it used got a good price it sat around for quite some time and he got a good price from a dealer because it wasn't a Toyota dealer so they obviously didn't know the worth of the vehicle and he could drive the thing for years and years to come. It's only got 118,000 miles on it now, and when he bought it, it had 72,000 miles on it, so he's driven some miles on it, and it's been a great car. Now realize, it's an SUV. He's happy driving around town, getting 22 miles a gallon in the thing, and you might think, well, you know, oh, that's not great gas modules, which some of the new ones can do, but if you compare that to some of the mobility vans, and they're sometimes are lucky to get even in the teens, they might get nine miles a gallon, this thing is pretty good gas mileage. Got the variable valve timing, 2.5 liter engine. And as you can see, it's a 2014. Yeah, some of the earlier ones like 2007 did have oil burning problems, but this is the totally re-engineered engine. These engines don't have any problems at all. Now his previous one was a 2001 RAV4. And he admitted when he got 180,000 miles or so, it started doing a little hesitating in reverse. The transmission was acting up a little but he still drove it because it still went and he sold it to a guy who's still driving it and it's still going down the road and interestingly enough though that old one was in Rhode Island too it's not all rotted up because you have to understand Toyota way back when was using zinc based electrostatic primer in their paint don't really rust now like the video I made on rust you gotta look because if you run over a speed bump and you scratch it well then you've scratched that off and that can rust or if rocks from your tires hit the fenders and they crack the paint and it goes down to the bare metal then the salt will get in and it'll start rotting but if you take care of them they really don't rust even in Rhode Island now the back opens up and of course He's got his mobility here. He's got his wheelchair, plenty of room. And the best thing about it is you don't have to disassemble the stupid thing and then put it back together again. I've done that for elderly people and it is a pain in the rear end. There's plenty of room here. Goes in, goes out, no problems at all. And check it out. The wheelchair is here and the seats are still up. He didn't have to push them down. He can still have a full complement of passengers and the wheelchair fits in and no one's inconvenienced. You know, I really wonder if Toyota thought about that when they designed it in the first place. They very well might have. Now you can hear the solidity. Look, they're solid made. Now, granted, this wasn't made in Japan, but it's my second most favorite place, Canada. I had a Ford Maverick made in Canada. My wife's Matrix was made in Canada. Canadians do a good job building vehicles. And when it comes to, you know, do you need two wheel drive, all wheel drive? That's a decision you make yourself. Now we are in Rhode Island here, and this is an all wheel drive one. He uses his all season tires. And he never gets stuck. Now he's got red steins on him, very good tires. He never gets stuck in the snow. You don't necessarily need snow tires. If you have good all season tires and all wheel drive and drive conservatively, he admits he doesn't go flying 60 miles an hour when it's snowing hunks of snow. He'll just drive slower. He's not gonna get stuck. He's never been stuck. If you really are an aggressive driver though, I'd advise putting snow tires on it, but you don't have to. Now, as we look at the engine, you can see corrosion. That's normal. 
that's aluminum, aluminum will corrode, it means nothing. Now if you watch my other video, you can see the bare bolts have rust, you're getting a little rust on the strut towers, you want to spray a little of that Boeing spray I showed in the previous video, that prevents that from happening, it's superficial, but eventually the strut towers would get some rust, and so I just advise spraying that stuff on there, and not worrying about, hey it's going to corrode all the way through, because these things can last so long, any car that's on the road where they put salt on in the winter, and now these are days they use 100% salt, they used to mix oh, yeah. it, now it's 100% salt, it's going to rust the metal parts, so you want to protect the metal parts, now you can see the original, Toyota LA wheels perfectly fine because they're protected from corrosion they are not bare metal if you do get chipped you can just respray over them they won't actually rust to any damage because they're not steel if they were steel you'd have to but still you want to keep them looking good so if they do get chipped you can always paint over them so let's take it for a spin and it's got a nice ride height but I see what he means about the variable steering you are differently abled it's kind of annoying that's why I put the spinner on the spinner is going to be pretty consistent because it's got its own bearing in it, now this is an all wheel drive SUV, so don't expect a smooth ride over bumpy surfaces, because basically it's a small truck, you're going to feel bumps on the road, that's just how they are, if you do not like bumpy rides, basically don't buy an SUV with all wheel drive, they're higher up in the air, they have a bumpier ride, they'll run forever these RAV4s, but if you're a real fanatic about ride comfort, these aren't the vehicles you should buy in the first place, but of course they're great for taking to the beach, sunny or rainy day, and we'll do our little test here, away we go, it's got some acceleration to it, and it shifts like a dream still, smooth shifting, and if you don't care much about speed, you can always put it on eco mode like he drives it, you will save on gas, and having cerebral palsy, he loves the fake leather seats because he can slide right in, it's a big deal that he can slide right in, because face it, when you're having a hard time getting in, you got a cloth seat, it's going to bind on your rear end, but on these, that's one of the reasons they got this particular car, he wanted to get these seats so that he could slide in and out easily, and since he bought a used car, he had to look around till he found one, so if you're looking for a disability van, maybe not even think van, you'd be surprised at what you can do with one of these RAV4s, fitting the wheelchair in the back without any modifications, and buying some gigantic thing that not only gets horrible gas mileage, but let's face it, if you have a disability, what's the last thing you want, they have a giant vehicle that's really hard to park somewhere, <laughs> this thing fits in the parking spaces a lot easier, and here's some bonus questions and answers, Joseph D'Souza says Scotty how do you feel about E85 fuel, E85 fuel is called E85 because it's 85% ethanol, alcohol made from corn mainly, and 15% gasoline, they can't make it 100% or they run kind of weird, it costs a little bit less, but you get anywhere from 20 to 30% worse gas mileage, so you're actually losing out today, with the price of normal gasoline, you're losing money using E85, on the other hand, and this is a big deal, they actually give you more horsepower, and they have less emissions, they burn cleaner, so if you don't mind the more money per miles that you're going to spend on fuel, it's an excellent fuel for riding around it, but you have to have a car that can do it, you need one of those that says flex fuel, you don't want to put it in a regular car, it can mess things up, but if you got a flex fuel car, and you don't mind getting worse gas gas mileage, and quite a bit worse gas mileage, it does burn quite clean, and it has more horsepower, Buddy Camp says, will a 1982 inline 6 start after 20 years, well I did one a couple of months ago, and it did, it had no problems at all, those straight inline 6 silent engines are insanely built, if they sit, sometimes the piston rings kind of rust in, so what you want to do before you do anything is, take all six spark plugs out, all right, get a spray bottle, and fill it up, marble mystery oil, it's amazing stuff, fill it up with marble mystery oil, squirt all the cylinders, let it sit for two or three days, then try to crank the engine over, and if it spins, great, then after it spins, for maybe a minute, put the spark plugs back in, put some gas in, and see if it starts, those are amazing engines that can last a really long time, our Douglas says, Scott, your thoughts on the known 2011 RAV4 whining noise transmission failure, I'm trying to determine failure rate, been on Toyota's forums, bought one a month ago with 117,000 miles, well yes, they have had problems with some of them whining, all the ones that I've seen, they whine, but they still worked okay, you bought it used, it works okay, you might just think about changing the fluid in it, just to see, it's a Toyota, sometimes changing the fluid will get rid of a whining noise, they are known for that, now at least it's not like the earlier ones, ones before that, they actually had transmission failures, where the computer or the transmission went on, it cost thousands of dollars, with those, the worst thing that happens to them generally is that they whine, kind of like bad children, 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.